And you know, sister, talking about the altar, we were singing that song, got me thinking. You know what you do with the altar? You sacrifice, you kill, and you leave it. So many times she's right. We come to an altar and we bring stuff. We don't even lay it there. We think we do, but when we get up and we take it back, that meant we didn't sacrifice and kill the thing that we were supposed to leave on that altar. That's free this morning because that ain't my message. But I was just sitting back there thinking about that. I was like, you know what? That is just profound when you start to think about what an altar is for. It's to kill things upon. To kill the sin, the hurt, and stress of life upon the altar of God. And then leave it there for him and not for us to take it. Because like she said, his burden is light and easy to carry. You know, I was very honored to ask to come back and speak. I've been wrestling for about three weeks with this because I um, really didn't want to bring it. Um, something new to me. And it's a little hard to swallow. But the first thing I want to say is that everything in this book is a love letter. It's a love letter. If it spanks you, he's telling you this because he loves you. If he gets on to us, it's because he loves us. If he gives us commands or he tells us things in the Bible, it's so that it doesn't hurt us in our day-to-day -day lives with him. You know, so many times today in this culture, I've noticed that this is hate. Everybody's regarding what is said in the words of God as hate. There are places in the United States that you cannot preach Messages from this because it is considered hate speech to a group. That place is California, if you don't know that. It's illegal to preach out of certain passages out of this because of what it says. It's considered hateful. Do we realize that nothing in this book is hateful? Maybe some of us has delivered a message out of it in a hateful and ungodly way. But this message is not hateful, it's one of love, and it's one of restoration unto a God that wants his people to be with him and have an open relationship with him. So when he tells you in here that you're sinning, or that we have sin in our lives and we need a holy God to save us from the sin that's in our lives, it's not that he hates us, but it's because he loves us so much. That he willing to send his son to die on the cross for our sins and tell us that we need him so that when we come to this altar and we give our hearts to him, his blood covers us and we can have that relationship with God that God wanted from the beginning. And once we do that, don't care where you go, how you do it, there's a bunch of different things that people think happens once you leave there. Some people think that once you do that, then that's all there is to the Christian life. And we're just waiting in limbo until we get to heaven. If that's all you think happens when you give your heart to Christ, you've got an empty relationship. Well, I'm standing here before you. There's a lot more to God than just coming up here, giving your life to Him, and then going off and waiting until you die to go to heaven. I mean, that's just empty and useless, personally. I mean, you know, there's more to God than that. There's more than a relationship with Him than that. But I want to say something. Sin blocks that relationship even once you've given your heart to Christ. Yes, our sins are under the blood of Christ, but when we sin, it still causes division among us and Christ. This morning, I'm going to go to the Old Testament. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to the old law. Exodus 20, verse 7. Um, now, I'm going to read it, and it's not long, and I would ask that everybody would stand up while we read the Word of God. Um, I don't know if y'all do that here, but it's a sign of respect to His Word. Um, I, I will go ahead and read it. It says, Thou shalt not... 
take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Um, my Bible also has the international version. I want to use that too. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Brother Mark, would you pray? Lord, I just pray that we uh, give you and the word the respect it deserves, Lord. Lord, we know who you are and we know what you have planned for our lives, Lord. You want nothing but good for us, Lord, but we've got to get to you. We can't keep going out and seeking our own will and our own way, Lord. It's got to be about you, your word, and what you tell us, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that your word today coming through Mr. Ravenbart will penetrate our souls, our hearts, and our minds, Lord, so that we'll change according to your will and live for you. It's in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, this verse, y'all may be seated. I'm done. This is the only scripture I'm going to go to today. I think there's enough in this one scripture that's going to take a minute to get through. We hear the scripture, we all say, you shall not take. And in all of our minds, we straight go after taking God's name in vain, either saying GD, cussing, or in a manner of speaking, saying, oh my God. Now, I want to read some stuff. Don't get too boring, okay? Take. That word right there means to lift, carry, bear, take, or take away. A more literal translation, this all comes from the Hebrew. Literal translation of lotessa, which is to take, actually means you shall not carry rather than shall not take. Yahweh Elohim explicit that the commandment is against the misuse of the proper name Yahweh specifically. It is a prohib prohibition of blasphemy, specifically the misuse or translation vain of the name of God of Israel or using his name to commit evil. I just gave you all a whole bunch of information right there. That is not all up in your Bible, but if you will go and start researching things, you will find out that this scripture covers more than just your speech. Your speech is important. And we as Christians, if our speech isn't godly and holy, then we have a problem. It says here, from what I've read and from what I've studied, that the most literal translation of this is carry. Now we all hear take, as in we're going to speak some and take the names God in vain. And yes, it means that. But there's a more literal meaning that means carry. Now I, this is kind of where I'm going to, I'm going to, get into today is how are we carrying the name of the Lord God? Do we carry it in vain? Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I heard this, it just kind of stuck me in the heart. I know how I live, and I'm up here preaching. How do you live? That stuck me. Because let's face it, I'm not perfect. I know my brother Mark ain't perfect. I know my stepfather ain't perfect. And I've watched him get up at 4 o'clock in the morning for the last 20 years and read the Word of God, and I know he ain't perfect. But he's been one of the best examples of a godly man that I've ever seen. And I know he ain't perfect. So in your day-to-day -day lives, how do you carry God's name? Now, as Christians today... We have Christ living within us. Not only do we carry his name, but we are his representation to the world of who Christ is. And this specifically says in the New Testament, they will know that you are my people by the love that you have one for another. How do you love one another? How do you love your fellow man? How are you out there in your workplace? Are you cussing and carrying on in your workplace? 
Are you profane the name of God with your speech? Do you profane the name of God with what you do when you're at home? Do you profane the name of God how you raise your children? Do you profane the name of God by the way that you live your life in your day-to-day walk? Now, I'm not up here talking about a whole bunch of rules and regulations. I'm talking about how we live our life and how the outworld sees how you live your life. They watch. Trust me, they watch. They watch every move you make. They watch every mistake you make. And God today doesn't want his name to be misused no more than he wanted it to be misused then. Think about it. If a man that's evil goes and commits an evil act, that's nothing that bad. But if a man of God goes and commits an evil act, think about the repercussions of that. Not just in testimony, but think about the watering down of the name of God in our society right now. Just think about it, y'all. I'm I'm, I'm not trying to get really too impersonal into your lives, but I know that we don't live lives that are 100% according to this word. I mean, I just know we don't. Most of us don't even read it enough to know what it says. I mean, hey, if it shoe fits, wear it. If it don't, then you're good, I guess. But how do you know what the Word of God says about how you're to live your life? Are you going off of what your mama said? Are you going off of what your grandmama said? As you know, I've heard a lot of things that were supposed to be in the Bible, and you go to find them, they ain't there. I mean, I'm just, cleanliness is next to godliness. Eh, wrong, ain't there. Don't say it. Sorry. That just ain't there. So what do you know that the Bible says about how you are to live your life? Well, if I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Spirit, then the way that I live my life is I'm supposed to live it after Christ. If I can cuss and carry on and drink and do drugs and it don't bother me, I got a problem. I'm just saying, and if you cuss and you carry on, and I'm sorry, but this, this, the word of God prohibitively, he says to be sober, to be of sober mind. That's New Testament, by the way, in the Old Testament, be of sober mind, be of sober mind. When we have our friends over that ain't in Christ, do, do we take sips with them? How do you live your life in front of other people? How are you carrying his name out there in a world that's watching us Christians? Now, Christ calls us to love each other. Christ calls us to love, but he also calls us Christians to carry his name, to bear his name, to take his name to the nations, to everybody around us, and to do it in a manner that he can stand behind. I do construction work. I lay flooring. I'm on a construction job. Six days a week. You know how hard it is to live this on a construction job where everybody is saying GD, cussing, carrying on, talking about this, that, and the other? Y'all know how hard it is just to, just to get up every morning, go to work, and live this out the best that you can. It's hard. It's hard to be a Christian in today's society. But you know what? Through that, I've gotten the pleasure to lead one person to Christ. My boss man's brother who was strung out on heroin for 15 to 20 years. He went to AA, got sober. AA showed him who God was. And one day in the van, he was like, well, I don't get cleaned up and then I'll go to church. I'm like, brother, you're going to die before you get clean and go to hell. He was like, all right, let's do it then. So on the way home one night, one afternoon, I led him to Christ. It weren't me. I'm not perfect. They see all my faults. They see all my failures. But they see it don't keep me down either. They see that I keep on trying to live this life. Mm. 
It's not going to be long and drawn out today. I didn't think it would be. But I think this is important for us to get a hold of in our lives. Because I don't know about y'all, but I see a whole lot of people that claim to be Christians that don't live no better than the world does. They don't dress no better than the world. They don't talk no better than the world. As a matter of fact, if you didn't see them in here on Sunday morning, you would have thought they were lost. And that's every church across the nation. That's not just here. I mean, that's, that's, that's just truth. So there's been a breakdown in our communications as Christians. Like me and my brother was talking about this morning. A lot of people don't even know the foundation of the Word of God. They come in here and they give their hearts to Christ. They go and live their life the way they think. They think they're good. They're going to go to heaven. How are we showing them? How are we as Christians showing other people how to carry God's name in a manner in which is acceptable to Christ? I don't know about y'all, but that, that's heavy to me. That's a heavy, heavy thing to think about. More importantly, me as a Christian is something I should be thinking about every day of my life. When I'm at the workplace, when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm sitting in the line of traffic and I'm getting ill and aggravated and somebody cuts me off and, hey, you know, we're there. Are you showing God's love and, God's, and God Christ in that moment of anger, in that moment of, of hesitation? Are you coming in that moment and showing Christ's love then? You know, it's easy to be a Christian when everything's good, y'all. You know, but when you take that hammer and you smash your finger, are you a Christian then? <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. I mean, hey, or do you let some four little words fly? When that person cuts you off in traffic, do you get up beside them, flip them the bird, and tell them to pull over because you want to fight? Man, hey, y- y'all think I'm lying. I've-, I've seen it more than once. I mean, come on. How, how are you living your life to show that you being a Christian is different than your fellow man that is not a Christian? Why is their fellow men living better than you? And they're not Christians. They're going to die and go to hell, but yet their life is better than yours. Where's the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life? We talked about coming to the altar and leaving things. When was the last time you left sin at the altar? You know, men, we have sin in our heads daily. When was the last time you came to this altar and you repented for that sin and you asked the Lord to crucify it upon the tables of your heart? Does your wife feel respected by your eyes, men? I mean, come on. I I mean, you know, hey, if anybody else here is is not affected by the lust of the eyes, raise your hand because it ain't me. I'm guilty. Man, it's a daily reprieve for me. Hourly, minutely, secondly, to ask the Lord to cover these things. So that they don't see and disrespect my wife the way they have in the past. Now, I'm just being honest here. Do you even care, men? Do you even care? Come on, young men. Do you even care about what your wife sees you looking at when they walk by? Do you even care? Or is it just human nature? Now I'm hitting home because this hurts. This is hard. Women, do you respect your husband? I mean, come on, y'all. We, we know these sins are just ever present in every one of our lives. And I know I'm not the only one that struggles with this stuff. Every man in here struggles with what I just talked about. And if you don't, then you are the most holiest person in the world. 
That's all I got to say. Me and you need to sit down and have some long discussions and talks. Because I need to know how to do it. Because I try. Lord knows I try. But it's hard. Satan is a crafty beast that puts things in front of you. And he does it to every single one of us. Are you standing and ready to fight against the enemy to carry God's name in such a way that you don't dishonor him with your conduct? And do we even care as Christians? Do we even care? Do you care? Do you wake up asking God? Don't let me sin today. Do you wake up asking God to remove temptation from you? Ladies, guys, children. I mean, are we living our life in a way that's holy and acceptable unto a perfect Christ? Christ wants us to examine our lives this morning. My life ain't never perfect. But I should be a little further along this journey than I was yesterday. Then I was 10 years ago. Then I was five weeks ago. And if I'm doing the same thing then that I'm doing now, then that shows a lack of respect and a lack of trying on my part to understand this word. God just wants a people that's going to love him. God just wants us to be faithful to him. And he wants us to carry his name in such a fashion that doesn't bring shame. And dishonor unto his name. Look at all the acts of evil right now that are committed in the name of God. Come on. Look at them. Twin towers being bombed in the name of God. Y'all say, well, that weren't our God. May not been our God, but whose name was on it? G-O-D. God. Look at the acts of evil that commit, get committed every day in the name of a church. Come on, y'all. We had the KKK going around forever hanging people in the name of God. I, I mean, hey, you can feel how you want to feel about that, but it's, it's true. I mean, you look at the acts of evil that's been committed in the name of Christ, and none of them fit what the Bible says that we're supposed, supposed to be. We're supposed to be loving, forgiving, compassionate, helping one another. And let me go ahead and burst your bubble. If the only place you're doing it is in this little body, Christ didn't come back for friendly community. Christ didn't come back for friendly community, church. Sorry, he's not. He's not come back for gateway. He's not come back for the Pentecostal. He's not come back for the holiness. He's not come back for the Baptist, the Catholic. He's coming back for his body of believers. One body. Under one God. Across this entire world. And we as believers, we can't even treat each other with respect, love, and dignity. I mean, come on, y'all. We see it. We in the church. I don't go down there to them Baptist people, man. They don't believe in speaking in tongues. And I ain't going down there to them Pentecostal people. They crazy. I don't know what they be doing. Lord knows. Don't go there to that Catholic church. You know they ain't saved. I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, hey. I mean, I'm just speaking it. Y'all talk about it. We talk about it. It's truth. I mean, why can't we talk about it? God ain't going to come for them no more than he's coming for you. You ain't no more perfect than they are. If they believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ crucified, raised from the dead, and he's their Savior, then they Christians just like you. And I hate to tell you everything else is just politics. Preaching anything other than Christ crucified, buried, and risen from the dead is preaching a miss is what Paul said. How are we carrying this to people, y'all? How are we as Christians getting up every day and treating your fellow brother and sister? 
Like she said, when she went through that stuff, she's going through. The church just kind of almost pushes people to the side. That is wrong and it should not be. Why doesn't the church gather around and support and lift up and pray and come along and minister and love and show Christ's forgiveness in the situation? Why do we condemn, put down, and just shove over to the side and leave for dead? I mean, come on. That's our sister. That's our brother. And it's not just in this building. It says that when you hurt, I should hurt. And when you're happy, I'm happy. I don't even know him to be happy. I don't even know him to hurt. How many other Christians outside your body of faith do you commune with? Do you get along with? Do we go and support each other? Do we carry the message as a group? Or do we just get off on our little selves and we're not even showing the love of Christ? Nor carrying it the way we ought to. Like I said, y'all, this this thing kind of hit me because I know how I live my life. I mean, I ain't perfect. I ain't, I ain't where I was, but I ain't perfect either. You know, some days I do better than others, but, you know, you talk about carrying God's name with you. And we all know it, y'all. We all know we got the Holy Spirit living within you. We all know we carry Christ around. But do we really know it? Do we really know it? When them thoughts are, you and your fellow friends are talking, them thoughts and stuff you're talking about, do you really know that Christ is in the midst of that? Because you're there and you're a Christian? And how you're dragging his name through it? Or how we act when things bad happen in our lives or how we don't love our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ? There's so much more to this Bible. There's so much more to this life as a Christian than just barely getting by in spiritual aptitude. So much more. So much more. We got people who have barren wounds. I I mean, my wife had one for nine years. I know. it's, it's, It's hard. The church can gather together and they can come together and the leaders of the church can lay hands on that wound and pray and it would be healed. Like that. Like that. Christ could come back tomorrow. Like that. Christ could come back today. Like that. Are you ready? Are we living our life in such a way that we stay ready for that to happen? Am I living my life in such a way that if I meet somebody at the grocery store and they know that I'm a Christian, I need you to pray. I need a healing. I need a touch from the master right here, right now. Do you even believe it when you pray it? When was the last time you walked into somewhere and somebody said, I know you're a Christian? I could tell you are a Christian from the moment you walked in this place. And I don't know why, but I need you to pray for me. How do you carry his name? How have you carried his name? And do we need to carry it a little bit better than what we have been? I mean, personally, I think we do. Personally, I think that we as the church have totally just missed this point. And we give our hearts to Christ. And we go out there and we live our life. And we don't even think twice about what we're doing and what we're saying. We get caught up in moments. And then we don't even go back to our fellow man and apologize. And tell them that, hey... I'm a Christian, and I should never have done that. Y'all know what I'm saying? Well, I'm about to close. I'm close. And we're going to have an altar call.
If you don't know Jesus this morning, I want you to know something. He's here. I've felt him ever since I walked in the door. Jesus is here in this place. And if you want to give your heart to Christ, Brother Mark's right here. And I'm sure there's other people in this sanctuary that would pray with you to receive Christ. If I could get some music playing, some kind of music playing. Can I get everybody to stand up, please? My sister said while she was singing, if you needed to come to the altar and leave things at the altar, it was the time. Well, the time has never changed to come to the altar, to leave things there. The time has never changed to come to the altar and sacrifice your life upon the altar of God and leave your sins, leave your person, leave who you are in that altar so Christ can Come in that life and take it over. If today that's you, come on down to this altar and get alone with Christ. There's plenty of brothers and sisters in this place that would pray for you. I know Brother Roger, and he's a great man of God, and I know that he has led this church, and there's people in this church that can pray the prayer of faith with you. If you need healing this morning, Christ is here in this place, and he will heal. Not maybe heal, not my heal, but Christ will heal this morning if you come here to this altar and you ask Him for healing. Not maybe, not might, but will heal. If you need deliverance from sin this morning, you come to this altar and you ask. And I get somebody up here to pray with this man. If you need deliverance from sin this morning, Come to this altar and ask God to deliver you from that sin.